Welcome to your free CAD crash course. To begin, create a new document. Select your sketcher menu from the top or otherwise you won't see the controls that you need. Create a new sketch. XY plane is sufficient. Here's your plane. To navigate within the plane, control click and drag, I'm sorry, center click and drag to reorient your position. Mouse wheel to scroll in and out. If you right click and drag it will rotate the plane and if you need to get back to an oriented position you can use the rotation controls at the top. We're going to start with a top down view of our XY uh, axes and we're going to draw a rectangle. Control click to set your first vertice and control click to set the opposite vertice. The Initial size and position does not matter because we'll be defining those with constraints later. You'll want to construct your shapes uh, for a complex part uh, as the individual pieces that you might construct a physical part out of. If the part's going to be 3D printed, um, that's fine, but to be able to reorient the pieces or clone pieces of the same dimensions, um, just uh, imagine it as building individual Legos. Um, if we want to make a cube as an example, um, we can select two vertices and we'll have to define the distance between those. Uh, if you control click out in the open away from the shape, it'll undo the selection. If you control click and select or control click and drag, uh, you can reposition the shape and change its size as long as there are no conflicting constraints with the movements you're attempting. So if we select two vertices and choose a horizontal constraint, then we can define the width of our rectangle. Um, I'll set it to 50 millimeters. I'll also give this the name of base width that we can use to reference later. Uh, likewise, I will select two more vertices, use the vertical constraint tool, um, and reference the previous measurement. Instead of defining 50 here as a static measurement, I'll hit equals to bring up the formula menu, um, a dot to reference the current object constraints, and I named that previous constraint base width. Um, so if I set that here, I don't need to give it another name, but this will reference that constraint. If I control and double click on it and change it to 60 millimeters, <laughs> both measurements will be changed so it remains a regular square. If I control click the object now, it doesn't resize the object, but it does move it because its position relative to the axis has not been defined. Um, a simple way of defining that position is select one of the vertices as a reference point and the center axes. Give it a horizontal constraint of say 20 millimeters. Um, now we can't move it away from the axes but we can still move it up and down. Um, I put it slightly out of alignment. I can use the navigation tools to realign this and center click and drag to reposition it. Select the same two points. To find a vertical constraint. 20 millimeters and now our sketch is fully constrained. The height and width have been defined and the position on the grid has been defined. Um, the position on the grid is just for the sketch. The object once created in three dimensions can be repositioned in relation to other objects. We can close our sketch, center click and drag it so that we can see the result. Mouse wheel out. Um, this is a top-down view at this point. It is a two-dimensional object. We can rename the item to keep track later as simply our base sketch. Now if we change to the part menu, ensure our sketch is selected on the left side, we can use the extrude tool to turn this into a three-dimensional shape. We can extrude it to 60 millimeters above the axes. Uh, you can also extrude below the axes at the same time or as an alternative. Select OK, and now when you rotate the shape, you can see that it's a 60 millimeter cube based on the dimensions of our sketch and the extrusion. Um, the extrusion can be adjusted after the fact. If we click our new part, 
um, and look at the properties, you can see where we set 60 millimeters. If you changed this to 10 millimeters, the relative size of the shape will change. If you changed it further to 2 millimeters, the shape will change further. You can view the shape from different sides, rotate it, um, and I believe through the view menu you can also set some predefined fixed views. I'll go back to the top of our shape and rename it. I believe. There it is. Um, before is base sketch. This one will be base part. If we want to define additional shapes, we can go back to the sketcher. Start with the top down orientation. New sketch. Uh, for simplicity, we'll keep this in the XY plane as well. Uh, and let's say we wanted to turn this into a table with legs. So we can use the rectangle tool um, and define one of our table legs. Let's say it's initially laying down in relation to the table. This might not be the most efficient way to define the leg, um, but as an example, so that I can show part rotation later. Control click to the vertices, set a horizontal constraint of 5 millimeters. Maybe name this leg width. And control click to make sure nothing else is selected. Control click to uh, the vertices, set a vertical constraint of 100 millimeters. Name it leg length for future reference. Uh, if you decide 100 millimeters is lo too long, you can uh, shift double click on that, change it to say 50. The position on the sketch doesn't matter. The position relative to the existing shapes is not relevant. Um, the position is independent to each sketch. Um, so we can control click the shape to freely reposition it just so that we have easy visibility. Um, or finish constraining the shape so that it can be used in other tools. If I select one vertice and select the center with a control click, then I can use a similar technique. For convenience, place it 20 millimeters away and 20 millimeters above. Um, again, it's relative to position to the existing shapes is irrelevant as it can be repositioned later. Um, so we can close that, and now we have a sketch of a table leg. We can return to the part menu, verify that the sketch is selected, use the extrude tool, extrude the part by 10 millimeters, rotate to view it from the sides, use the mouse wheel to zoom out to find our shape, zoom back in and realize we've made it twice as tall as it is wide. We can rename the part the original sketch is still there and can be modified. We can also change the extrusion after the fact. For instance if we make it 5 millimeters and hit enter uh, sometimes the shape doesn't automatically update. Um, and this version of FreeCAD might be buggy. Okay. Manually recomputing the object is another way to force FreeCAD to reevaluate its properties. Uh, now we have a square leg, but it is not oriented to the table in a useful way. Um, what we're able to do is select that three-dimensional part, select the placement, We'll need to change the position, but first we can rotate the shape. We know we need to rotate it 90 degrees, so we can put 90 degrees in here, um, but it did not rotate it on the axes that we want. If we change Z to 0, 
leave y at 0 and rotate it on x. Now the part is rotated relative to the table to be used as a support. It is just not in the correct position. Um, you can also rotate it on negative 90 degrees, uh, but that might make some other movements less predictable. With the leg rotated in the correct relative position, we can reposition it as well. Uh, because one of these was, I believe, 25 millimeters off of the axes, and the other was 20, a total of 45 millimeters brings it in line. 25 millimeters aligns it with the corner, uh, but it's still floating above our table, and so finally, using the mouse wheel or typing the measurements as you go, um, we can also adjust it. Minus 70 millimeters below, uh, and it should align with the base of our table. Because free CAD tends to crash, this is a good time to save your project. I'm going to overwrite a previous project. so that you can continue work if anything goes wrong. Now you can select the table leg part with an attached sketch. Control C, um, except that we're going to copy the dependencies as well, and Control V to create three more objects. Right now these objects all overlap with each other. You can hide them individually um, to declutter your view, uh, or simply reposition them to bring them into view. Uh, so if we select our second leg and change its position, we can align it. I'm just using the mouse wheel with the opposite side of the table. Um, clicking and dragging without holding any keys to reposition the view. Select the third leg. Leave it at minus 45. Use the 3D navigation and um, center mouse click and drag to reposition, mouse wheel to zoom, verify that that's correctly aligned. Change my rotation again. We'll actually switch to this view, select the last leg, and modify both positions. Now you have a complete table uh, with four legs. Uh, to keep track of that part, you can define a table uh, part and select your objects, shift click to highlight all of them, and then drag and drop them so that you have another part you can reposition as a whole. Um, so if we view this rotated, I can change its position relative to other parts. I can also change its rotation. I can save my project and um, select this part and export the entire thing as a mesh if I need to open it in another tool to create a 3D printed object.